welcome back to another episode of Fallcraft, and the pack has been updated to 1.3. No, that's not Minecraft 1.3, that's Fallcraft 1.3, and we can see the B00 Ren Dog are online right now, and I've just spent some time trying to update the pack. I hopefully I've done it right because I'm a bit of a newbie with all of this sort of stuff, but the reason we're recording as we log in here is because apparently there's something in my base that might kill me in 1.3, and I can't remember where I logged out. And now the game is hanging dramatically. So the world has loaded. And the thing that's going to kill me ain't here. So we're good to talk about what you see in front of me. We made some changes here. Had a ton of feedback from you about uh, this block that I was using down here. Many of you saying, why Asuma? Why would you use the builder block? I was just trying to be different. But many of you pointed out that this thing would actually chop down these trees, which is something I was kind of unaware of. So we've made that happen now. This thing has an axe. It will now chop down the trees. It will send the congealed slime into our system. And it does that through these dimensional transceivers that I've crafted. I made a few of these, but logging into 1.3, it seems, has broken this as all of the power has sucked out of all of these different things, which were like full up last time I was here. So 1.3, we're off to a bad start, that's for sure, but all of these saplings get sent through the dimensional transceiver, which also sends bone mill into this thing, so it can grow these things fast, and it has actually replaced all the other things we had here entirely. So over the back here, uh, we can um, move our slime blocks into the slimy generators. Problem is now that uh, they need something else to go in. It seems to reject that as well, which is kind of strange. Does it no longer do the blocks? Ah, that sucks. But you can see it right there. It now needs milk. Just my luck. I build a power system and now that power system requires milk. I, I don't know what to say. We'll have to sort that one out. These things can actually transfer fluids, can they not? Fluids? Yep, down here. So maybe we can use that to get the milk into there. That's probably a project for today's episode, right? But all of this stuff down here has now been made completely redundant, even this thing as well, which I believe was taking items out of this chest and putting it into refined storage. So that can all go because the dimensional transceivers have replaced them. Uh, but we got we got things to do there. We've got to fix that up. I can't believe that. <laughs> Make a new power system and it breaks straight away with the update. We're having the worst luck with power. You can see progress is happening in this middle area. I don't need to comment too much on that because you can see what's going on. If we head over here though, apparently these generators down here, uh, you can see exactly what I have been warned about. These will now hit me with nasty potion effects. What sort of potion effects are these? Are they actually strength? Oh, Spectre of Death. No, I do not like the Spectre of Death. Quick, before the Spectre of Death arrives, we must disable this. I'll tell you, Spectre of Death, I ain't afraid of you. I'm waiting. Come on. Come and take on X. I'm ready. Two, one. What the... Jeez, Asuma met his doom. What? I just got killed. <laughs> I thought someone was going to come and attack me. Well, we got to go get our items. Fortunately for us, there's not a lot of mobs around here. It's not night time and I can just pop down and grab them, which is quite all right. My gravestone is up there. No, this is very bad. Thank goodness for that gravel patch. <laughs> That's the way we'll get our items back. Hello. There. Oh, no, it's my ghost. Quick, pillar away from it. Oh, that was some quick thinking right there. Put the armor on. Yes, we'll do that. Oh, and Skaldor is requesting soul vials for these, actually, these guys right here. So now that we can fly, what we're going to do is grab a soul... He's gone down there. We're going to grab a soul vial and capture my own ghost. Hello, me. From another dimension, I think. Stop slapping me. I'm your friend. Bam. And you've been zapped into a soul vial. We could actually use that to spawn my own ghost over and over again. How crazy is that? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're going to go drop that off in the city of Maybe, where we might be going to later on in this episode. For now, though, we're going to do some 1.3 things, and we're going to try and get our power back online. The way to do that, believe it or not, is with moo cows, because we need milk, and we need a way to automate the gathering of milk. And there is a new mod in this pack called Progressive Automation, and this is some of the blocks from this mod. I believe in it's exclusive for this pack, as it was made by the people that made Fullcraft. And I've made a couple of blocks from this thing, haven't I? We've got the animal farmer over here. It's really difficult to read because of all these things on the side. 
So this can be used to breed animals. We actually want it to milk animals, and there's an upgrade for that. There's basically these blocks that come in four different tiers. You have wooden, stone, iron, and diamond. So I've gone straight to the top tier, and then you could put some upground upgrades inside of it. And it says, hey, X, hi, hello, animal farmer. How are you doing? If we put the milker upgrade into this thing, um, it should, oh, wait, actually, it probably goes there, doesn't it? Hi, now, is there, now there's a milk bucket in the interface. So, I've never seen this mod before, and it looks like it requires something. Maybe fuel or power? I'm not sure how this thing runs. Well, anyway, I've got a dimensional transceiver, so we can uh, plug some energy to it if it needs that. But for now, let's put the cows in the pen on the outside here, and then I've got to figure out a way to get this machine working. So, I put a dimensional transceiver on top of this thing, and immediately it has received the milk bucket it which is fantastic that's going to be our send channel we're going to have to move the milk over to our slime generators and this isn't permanent by the way we will actually probably move this farm into the same area but for now we're just figuring things out and then we've got a receive channel here for coal buckets which is coal and buckets so now this thing hmm yes we might have to push like this or we might need a conduit in between let's see if it can interact with it that still hasn't got the coal <laughs> Anyway, we'll put another one there, we'll put a bucket in here, and you'll see uh, that it turns it into milk fairly quickly. Now, it says range 1. Maybe actually one of the cows last time was standing a little bit closer to it. Hmm. Okay, well, it's not doing anything just yet. Check this out. I like this block. Oh, yeah, it's a slime block. That's all right. It's been painted with glowstone, and it emits light, yet it keeps... It's see-through property. Totally wasn't expecting that. Also, uh, we'd like you back. Bam. Because we're going to put a block there in the middle. I've been a bit of a, a fool <laughs> playing here on the Foolcraft server. I didn't realise that these dimensional transceivers required power to move items back and forth. So I couldn't get it to work with this block. The trick is to give this thing a little bit of juice. So once I added a power channel, it was then able to send and receive items. It actually tells you over on the side here that it needs 10 RF per tick. And without that... Without any juice, it's not going to send the items up above. Here's another cool thing about this block. When you break it, you get your upgrades back. So we can chuck that in there, and then this thing will be ready to milk some cows. So now we've got to create like a, a fence around the outside, right? And I don't want to do it with a regular fence. I want to make my own using chisel and bits. So I've grabbed um, this glass right here. I think this is going to make a cool fence. But here's a trick. We can have it as quite a low fence, I believe, as well. So if we knock this all the way back like so... And imagine that this is a block that you want to jump over, like a cow would. You can do that, but as soon as we add a strip of something else on top of it, it's then like there was a half slab there, you know, a half slab in vanilla, of course. So if we go to that connected pane again and do that, in theory, we can't... Well, I can jump over it because I got jump boost. So let's take off my jump boost for a second. I can still jump over it. I'm a little bit worried now. Okay, let's add one more on top of that. I can still jump over it. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be the same for the cows. I guess we can just try and find out, you know. Once it goes over half, maybe that's when I can't jump over it. Yeah, I can't jump over it now. Let's try it with just one. Let's get this going all the way around the outside, and then we'll find out if the cows can jump over it or not. Dude, this is looking so cool. I really do hope this works, because, man, this is an awesome-looking fence. I love that. I love that. It's so cool. All right, anyway, let's grab a couple of these. And I guess the only way we're going to find out is once we put them in there for a while, it will actually be a while before they decide to wander somewhere else now in this game. So we'll throw some down. And now what we've got to do is milk them manually a little bit because we don't have any power in our system, which means we've got to sort of kickstart it to get things going. And that means I've got to develop a system over on the other side. So I guess I'll come back in a second and they might have escaped. We've also got a lot of them to fit in that area. We might not actually end up needing that many, but let's focus on this thing. So it now requires milk buckets. That means we've got to take and receive the milk buckets using some of these item conduits on the back. That might be simple, it might not. It's currently an insert, so we can use extract and insert, and we'll set the extract to just be a milk bucket. Yeah, and then we'll have to have a double channel here, and then a double send receive here as well, I think. Okay, we're giving this thing a kick start, and it's nowhere near back to what it used to be, but I've got this all kind of working now. I've created a new channel over here called System Import, and that's a generalized import. So this thing, when it 
has like excess saplings, it'll send it into that. And we use that channel to put the milk buckets back. So over here, we've got a double channel set up like I just described. We are extracting the milk buckets once they've been used. And on the insert channel, we are inserting from this right here, which is doing bone meal, slime blocks and milk. Ah, and we need to change that so it's slime balls because this has changed as well. The recipes now mean that you can only use these, which is actually kind of easier because we had trouble crafting them into slime blocks, right? And now we can use all four different types. And I kind of need to set this thing up to put all four different types in there. So that is about to change. And then its send channel is the system import. So the milk, sorry, the buckets, the empty milk buckets are going to go into the main system. And then this thing is able to pull it from them and turn them into milk buckets. Now our current problem is that this thing is really slow. It might need more cows, but I think it's got something to do with the range. And earlier I crafted this upgrade, uh, the wither one. It cost me a wither star. What happened there? It rearranged my inventory. Thanks. Uh, this costed a wither star. But anyway, we can go and throw this thing into there. And now the range is four. Excellent. And you saw straight away it made a bucket of milk. Okay, so we won't mess with this. We can see it's making some milk. What I'm going to do is observe that and also perhaps chuck in a couple more cows. Maybe it will do this faster if there's more cows in the area. What a huge sigh of relief. Everything is back and working. And this thing is is growing the trees and chopping them down. We are making slimes. The slimes are coming into this system. I changed the old channel, so now we send through these three items. And I was just thinking, what's going to happen is that the first one is going to get used all the time because it's the only thing that can be inserted into here. So as soon as some of these get used up, it's going to insert more, which may mean that the green ones run out at some point, right? But that's not going to cause a problem because then it will move on to the next color. So down here, you can actually see that that could potentially happen. If we run out of these in our system, then only orange and purple ones will go through, right? So then it will start using those back over in that farm. And if ever they run out here, then there'll be loads of green ones in the system to then go into here. It's kind of strange because it's one of those situations where you don't want this to become unevenly distributed like it is right now. But actually, it will fix itself over time, which is really, really cool. All right, so let's head back into the middle. I added a few more cows. Then it seemed to start working a lot faster. Uh... They Okay, so those buckets were just on the ground, weren't they? That's interesting. When this thing is full, it's going to chuck the buckets on the ground. That's kind of not something I actually want it to do. All right, it's not overflowing with milk buckets anymore. And I think that's because there's no more buckets in the system, which makes me think maybe what we need to end up doing at some point is not use our master system for buckets because any buckets that are in there are going to be converted for milk. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. Apparently, we're going to go up into the sky. Actually, what I want to do now is take a break from the technical stuff. I do want to expand what we're doing here, though. I want to add tons of generators, capacitors. We want to get rid of this cobblestone and start to decorate this area. So this is what I'm going for in this room. We've rearranged some of the technical stuff around the outside. We've got capacitor banks and we've got slimy generators. We'll come back to that in a second because what I want to look at right now is the aesthetics of this room. We've got this limestone going on and I'd like to tie it into another build theme that we've done already because I want some consistency here and playing modded I find it very difficult to stick to a plan. The projects kind of like tear me in different directions and I kind of like that and at the same time I kind of don't as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to throw down some dirt and we're doing this to check out what it looks like um, next to the limestone basically so a few more of these and so far it kind of looks all right I think it's not too bad is it perhaps some depth is needed here like we need to drop that down one block or raise these up a little bit and remember all this cobblestone is temporary and I think the dirt could work next to the limestone but we'd have to build it all together correctly and another thing we're going to throw in is, of course, the factory blocks, because this is the build that I did for our mob farm using the dirt and the factory blocks. It looked really alien and crazy and sort of ancient as well. And I love that. It looked really, really cool, like something you'd see in a movie. So I was thinking that we could throw some of this down in the corner, although to me it kind of screams that it should come outwards a little bit. So maybe we have like three pillars like this and then behind it we throw in a bunch of dirt. That could potentially work. This is going to need a lot of work. This is going to need some real thought and uh, and design here. So I'll probably tear down and rebuild quite a few times. But let's go back to the uh, the technical stuff with the capacitors and the slimy generators. So I want these to be grids 
of three by three. So we've got nine and we've got three of those in total. That one hasn't been turned over yet because we're still relying on it for power. And then it's going to distribute the power to these big capacitor banks. Now you can see that they've got screens on them at the moment. And with the Yeta wrench you can configure this stuff so you can see the screens. And what's interesting about this is when you first place it down you get this little bar at the front and then when you start like right clicking on it you can change the settings but you can never get it back to that same bar. You can only get it to this one here. And if I click on that again you can see that our screen gets a little bit bigger and we can see both the input and the output. Now what I want to find is something that's nice and even and that will probably be it right there. We can see both of them at the same time, but you can make this even bigger if you want to. If I click this a whole bunch of times, you can see that it makes that big old thing. And if you make it another step bigger, it actually kind of makes it smaller in a way, because you see less information. So I'm not sure which way I want to arrange it, but I want to have a combination of screens and those bars as well to give you an idea of what's going on. Now when it comes to distributing the energy, I kind of want to make things a little bit visible. At the moment, what we have is a dimensional transceiver behind the scenes you don't see what it's doing I want to change up the style a little bit here and put it on display so we've got one over here that's going to distribute the energy and it's also going to sort out the generators with the items that they need so there'll be some conduits going behind and then what we'll do is we'll use this energy conduit to connect all of the capacitors but we'll put it out here on display at the front. Now the block that I've used here is painted glowstone so that's also emitting some light. We've got a light source down here I felt like those walls are starting to get a little bit dark. Now how do we get it from there into the capacitor bank I was thinking and what we could probably do is have a conduit facade here and then it would go through that block down onto the capacitor. But Wow I've managed to fall all the way through there onto the capacitor bank so that way we can hook all of the things together and yet it's kind of visible as well which I think will be really cool. Time for an experiment. Okay, copied conduit settings, we're going to paste it over here and that's not what I wanted to see. <laughs> um, so if we open this thing up what we should find, yep it's copied but it hasn't included an item filter which means we've got to go through these one by one and do this. So up here we got some conduit facades in between our painted glowstone and all looks good except at the front there you can see there's this little line. So if we go around to the front there it's very noticeable that the texture changes in those positions which is unfortunate but it made me think maybe we can just break up this texture. Hi that tree just grew and we were inside of it. <laughs> um, but yeah anyway let's take a step back look at the room look at this factory block going across the top here. I love it. This is coming together. But I am starting to think that you could probably replace this limestone with something different and it would look a lot better. And honestly, I ain't got a problem with that if we can come up with a better texture. But for now, I'm going to let this uh, rustic and dirt look take over the rest of the room. So that'll be some stuff in the corners and a roof area, which I think we're going to use some architecture blocks, one of those slopey ones, uh, to bring it together at the top. Anyway, I'm just trying to get this thing up and running, as you saw there with the conduits, got to do a little bit more configuring. I'm making more dimensional transceivers, so I head over here to my mob farm and all of these things are pointing in the opposite direction. I can't remember if there was an easy way to swap these around so they face the other way, but that's kind of unfortunate. I guess we're not going to be using this thing for a while. Let's, uh, let's turn it off. May not look like much, but I've finished configuring uh, these two sides now. Boy, oh boy, does all that technical stuff take its time. And I'm not 100% sold on what material we could use in this space here, but I had a little bit of a vision, and I felt like something grey might work in here. Now, we are probably definitely going to replace the limestone at this point, uh, but I have a bit of a plan, and I'm not entirely prepared here, actually, because I need to make some factory blocks, and I need to get rid of this stone. If dirt had that texture or something brown, we'd probably have a winner to go in that space there. But I like that. I feel like that plays into the same sort of theme that we've been gunning for. And now what we're going to use is Architecture Craft again. We've seen this one before and I've got a feeling this probably isn't going to look too great. But let's grab ourselves some of these and we're also going to do that with this texture as well. As the vision that I had for this thing was it to get all sloped and and sort of come out from the corners into the middle of the room. You, you'll see what I mean as I start building it. So let's place two of those and put this on the front. Now the texture isn't going to connect. That might not be the worst thing ever though. It might still look good. It kind of looks like a grill now, like it's a bit plated, which I 
quite like actually. Um, so that'll go like that and I've just realized that very quickly it's going to join up with where we'd find the other one on the other side. So what we'll probably end up with is a few slopes coming across the middle as well. But yeah, look at that, it's immediately uh, met up with the other one. Not 100% sure if that's what I want, but my other idea was then that we'd have this come along as well. It's back by one block, so probably like that is what we're talking about. And look at the texture on the front of it. It loses the thing that it had before, so it's probably, yeah, that's, that's really not going to work, is it? And what I could use is something with a plain texture, but then it sort of ends there and doesn't continue when it turns into a slope. Now I consider that to be actually a really cool shape, and the reason that I moved over from the corner to here is it just felt like that was the better place to get that slope in, and I think we've achieved that. I'm not 100% sold on that dirt texture, but I do like the other factory block texture here. And at this point, the clock is ticking down. You always hear YouTubers complain about it when they're making their videos. Modded is just, it's a grind to do stuff. And I feel like I want to let that sink in because we're talking about changing this texture. And I think maybe the dirt texture there isn't the right one to use. I also really like this pattern. And I think we definitely need to use that, but we need to find the right texture. So in one of my future live streams, I will be working on this room and finalizing the ideas of the textures. Uh, but otherwise, we've got power situated in the base now, I think, because these haven't filled up, which is very odd. So I actually thought it was doing that a moment ago. Oh, oh, we've lost power everywhere, have we? What? <laughs> Why is power down across the boards? Oh, I mean, what is that about? All the power's gone. So my buddy Yiscal popped by to give me a hand with the capacitor problems and I think it's because everything was kind of in a loop so he suggested what we do is connect everything together with the capacitor banks so they're actually all one giant capacitor bank which is a very interesting idea and then I thought well we can kind of use this as a cable then we have power coming from the dimensional transceiver above uh, since we don't use this stuff anymore we can kind of run it across here like a cable <laughs> and that will store all the power come on connect there we go I'm gonna take this one back and then from that central point this can also run all the way over to where we'll connect it on this side as well and I'm happy to do that it's a little bit strange but I don't know I think it'll work but it also means that the way that our conduits here are gonna to connect to these banks needs to change as well why have I got so many of these lined up it doesn't make any sense so those ones at the top that go to the dimensional transceivers, they're sort of no longer relevant. <laughs> and also neither are the dimensional transceivers. I just sort of put them there to look interesting and now they're kind of redundant. But that means we've got one giant capacitor bank here and look at how much RF it's storing, it's quite a lot. And now all the meters would technically be the same, would they not? No, I know why, it's because that one's actually separate, isn't it? This one's part of the ginormous one, which is why it stores um, a lot more. So in the future what we're going to do is probably put some screens on here to display where the power is going to and that's a whole project for another day but the infrastructure is coming along well. It's coming along well in here. And I believe that these shall be the last blocks that we place and that all is good in the world. Once that thing has power we are good. Excellent, excellent. Now these are firing up. So they've all been configured. Let's just evaluate everything because we've talked about it so much. We now have this very neat setup right here and the power will get transferred down the bottom. Those are not the last blocks, I forgot to put those so it can move the power into our capacitor bank. So we have one giant capacitor bank, we have three places where the slimes are being generated and the power is being moved around. We've removed the conduits that were on display, I like that idea but it's no longer necessary. And so now when we look at any one of these we'll see exactly what's going on. So currently it's just... Okay, now it's going up a little bit. I'm going to guess that this thing is now sucking up a bit more power because some trees have grown. Because a moment ago it was a lot higher than that. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it. So now the thing is that not all of these generators are on all of the time. I don't think this thing over here produces cow buckets fast enough. I never see them on the ground, and yet yeah, usually the site is this. As soon as you create one it disappears. I don't know if there's a speed upgrade for this thing but what we might end up doing is making four of them in one spot. 
and then when we've got enough buckets we'll probably find that we don't have enough slime balls from these trees and we can supplement it with something different I'm thinking maybe some sort of slime farm there is actually that thing over there which we could possibly take advantage of although the spawning will be based on the range from me when I'm actually inside our base there in the middle that's probably a pretty good range to get some spawns up there but then we'd have to do a load of caving and torch all of that up as well so I'm not really sure what way we're going to uh, work with the slimes but if we go in here I do just want to check on how much we've got wow we are actually using up every little bit that comes into the system I can give it a little bit of a boost by doing that but we don't need the energy at the moment all right, I need to stop talking about this room <laughs> and the project that we got going on here. It's off to a good start, but we need to produce more slime balls to produce more power. So we know what we're doing in the future. However, the next episode, probably going to be working in the city of maybe again. We've got this sort of rhythm of going back and forth, which I really enjoy. And guess what? That's going to be it for me this episode of Full Craft. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like on the video. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.